Eat the Rich is primarily a study of how our economies work or don't. And for his research, O'Rourke visited a strongly contrasting bunch of countries. First, the USA itself in the shape of the New York Stock Exchange, then post-communist Albania, Sweden, Cuba, Russia, Tanzania, Hong Kong and mainland China, specifically Shanghai. Eat the Rich was written in 1997, so a decade or more before the recent crash, but perhaps its main conclusion is timeless. Beyond a certain point, the book argues, regardless of whether a government is communist or capitalist, democratic or a dictatorship, the more it interferes with its citizens' industrial and commercial life, the worse the country's economy will work. But, PJ O'Rourke, I wonder if you'd start by reading from the very opening of Eat the Rich, where you're just setting out on your quest. Yes, I, I, and I think this pretty much explains why I wrote the book. Um, I had one fundamental question about economics. Why do some countries prosper and thrive while others just suck? It's not a matter of brains. No part of the earth is dumber than Beverly Hills, and the residents are wading in gravy. In Russia, meanwhile, where chess is a spectator sport, they're boiling stones for soup. Nor can education be the reason. Fourth graders in the American school system know what a condom is, but aren't sure about nine times seven. Uh, natural resources aren't the answer. Africa has diamonds, gold, uranium, you name it. Scandinavia has little and is frozen besides. Uh, maybe culture is the key, but wealthy regions, such as the local shopping mall, are famous for lacking it. Perhaps the good life's secret lies in civilization. The Chinese had an ancient and sophisticated civilization when my relatives were hunkering naked in trees. Admittedly, that was last week, but they'd been drinking. In 1000 BC, when Europeans were barely using metal to hit each other over the head, the Chao Dynasty Chinese were casting ornate wine vessels big enough to take a bath in, something else no contemporary European had done. And yet today, China stinks. Government does not cause affluence. Citizens of totalitarian countries have plenty of government and nothing of anything else. An absence of government doesn't work either. For a million years, mankind has had no government at all, and, and everyone's relatives were naked in trees. Plain hard work is not the source of plenty. The poorer people are, the plainer and harder is the work they do. The better off play golf. And technology provides no guarantee of creature comforts. The most wretched locales in the world are well supplied with complex and up-to-date technology in the form of weapons. Why are some places wealthy and some places poor? It occurred to me at last that this might have something to do with money. But I didn't know anything about money. I didn't know anything about money as a practical matter. Did I have enough money to pay the mortgage? And I didn't know anything about money in a broad or abstract sense. I certainly didn't know anything about economic theory, and I wasn't alone in this. P.J. O'Rourke, thank you very much for that.